Hello and welcome to Orion Today. I'm Joe Johnson and once again I am joined by Tracy Woodrum. Happy welcome back. It's been a little while. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a couple months. Glad to be back. <laughs> Did you like that little festive open at the beginning I of the show? I loved it. I know. Was, I was uh, looking at that. I'm like, I love the colors and the music. It's yeah. got me in the mood <laughs> for the holidays. It's a little montage of yeah. all the things that are happening here in Lake Orion. Yeah. Um, you know, here in the community things kind of officially kick off with the tree lighting ceremony that we had back in November. Yeah. And that was just absolutely incredible. And yes. the park was full and it was a nice night and there were horse drawn wagon rides and stuff like that. Yep, so. I can see from my house, I can see the horses go by and downtown was bustling and I just always love the energy when we have an event downtown. Yeah, so. yeah, and you know, we, we kept saying it that, that night that uh, downtown Lake Orion is turning into like a Hallmark movie it, yes. with the gazebo <laughs> and the tree and all yeah. the stuff. Yeah, that's, we uh, even have the church with the steeple. Yeah, and, yeah. Isn't it? it's <laughs> yeah. like a movie set. I've done it, that before. I have actually, years ago, I took a picture and I actually posted on Facebook and I said, a set from Hallmark, and actually, we actually have a, a Hallmark uh, actor yeah. in our in our village as well. Jerry Narsh, <laughs> yeah, uh, former police chief yeah. and uh, current village council president. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Apparently, he's been in a couple of uh, locally made films. Yes. So. Yep. Yeah. So, so that's lots fun. going on and a lot coming up. Uh, something that's ongoing uh, right now is the Orient Arts Center's Holiday Market. Yes. Uh, that kicked off the same night as the, uh, the Christmas tree lighting. And if you're looking for that unique, one-of-a-kind, handcrafted uh, yeah. item, you can swing by the Arts Center. Uh, their hours are Thursday, Friday, Saturday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, all the way through December 23rd. So yeah. if you're doing some last second Christmas shopping, like I probably will yeah. be doing, uh, you could stop by the stop Art Center in. and pick up some really great items. I love that Michigan uh, ceramic tray there. And Yeah, uh, I've, I've, I've bought gifts there before from jewelry to, you know, decorations. Um, there really is quite a variety there. So it's, yeah. I encourage you to stop in, so. Yeah, and Thank I you. chatted with I think it was uh, Holly, who's the director there, who two daughter, her two two daughters were selling like little charm necklaces and yeah. stuff, and it was really cute. And uh, so that's right by the table as you come in. So, uh, so there's some ideas for uh, for you for some last minute shopping, and that'll be going on uh, right up through Christmas uh, weekend, leading up to Christmas. Yeah. And uh, what else is going on? Oh, there's some stuff coming up. Uh, this weekend, as a matter of fact, um, here at the Orient Center, I, I checked just to make sure that uh, there's still some spaces available, but this Saturday is Breakfast with the Grinch. Ooh. And not to be confused with the <laughs> events that are going over uh, going on over at Canterbury Village, yeah. uh, here at the Orient Center is Breakfast with the Grinch, and I'm told there are still some spaces available for the early uh, session. There's two sessions, one at 10 a.m. and one at 11.30, I believe. And so there's still some space, but you get some photo ops uh, with the Grinch, some green eggs and ham, uh, some crafts and uh, reindeer food and all sorts of stuff. And uh, that's a really festive event. Uh, you know, for fun. years they had Santa Claus in the building and then they decided to mix it up a little bit and bring the Grinch yeah, in. Yeah, change it up. Santa, uh, Santa gets busy this time of year. That's so right. You need to give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really great. Like the kids that have been coming uh, for years, they wear their little Grinch pajamas and yeah. outfits and hats and sweaters and things like that. So uh, if you're interested, you can swing by for that. Um, and then in about a week or so, that would be uh, December. 17th, uh, the Snow Dash 5K oh. for those runners that like to run in the cold. Like you? Uh, are that's you, you're, you're two <laughs> things I don't like doing, running and being and in the cold. cold. Yeah. And uh, oh. But they get about 100 or so people who come out. Uh, you okay. see last year it was a snowy morning. Oh, uh, wow. They leave. The starting line is at the Orient Center. And when they say go, they uh, head out onto the Pollyann Trail. And I do have to admit, when I'm out there shooting video and the, the snow has fallen and it's so quiet out there, it's, yeah. it's actually pretty beautiful out it's there. It's beautiful and peaceful, but nice to watch. Right? Yeah, I'd rather behind watch the camera. and shoot video <laughs> than... Uh, yeah, I'm, but... I'm, I'm with you. I don't, you're not, <laughs> not going to catch me running in the snow. <laughs> uh, so they head out. Uh, I think they go to Civic Center Park, turn around, 
come back to the Orient Center, cross the finish line. They'll have some uh, medals for the finishers uh, crossing the line. And uh, it's for those of you who are into that sort of thing, yeah. <laughs> uh, that is Sunday the 17th uh, with start time at 9 a.m. If you are interested in uh, doing the Grinch breakfast or taking part in the 5K, this week is also the, the Made in the Mitten Crab Show. Uh, you can give them a call at 248-391-0304, uh, extension 3500, or you can visit orionparks.com. Uh, so much going on in this yes. community this time of the year. It is. It's, it's a wonderful time. There's something <laughs> for everybody. So. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And we're doing our part to help yeah. uh, help you get into the mood, uh, decorating the set today. And uh, this will be our last uh, show of the year. And then we'll be back uh, in January to kind of kick things off again yeah. at the beginning of the year. So. I can't believe we're already sitting in December. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm, I keep trying to remind myself that uh, it's the holiday season. Have you... Yeah. Where are you? are you? Have you done your shopping? Have you set up your tree? What have you done? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm pretty far along. So mm -hmm. my daughters actually set up. They were home for Thanksgiving break. They set up the tree. Mm -hmm. um, so the inside is done. I have my shopping done for the most part. Few wow, things left to do. I'm impressed. Yeah, well, you know, the college kids are coming home. I have one daughter coming home in a couple of days and then another one next week. So I kind of need to have things and get it wrapped and put away and... Before everybody is everywhere all the time, <laughs> so so yeah, but no, nothing exterior, no lights yet. I still have no. to swap out my fall motif. Uh, <laughs> so. I know some people took advantage of the warm weather we had a couple of weeks ago to get out there and hang the lights. I did not. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll probably be a small display this year for Christmas lights, but I'll get something up soon. What's so. your tradition for Christmas Eve, Christmas morning? So it's a little bit different um, depending on, you know, which holiday the kids are, my kids are with me. So we usually get together with my family um, on either Christmas Eve or the day after Christmas. So mm -hmm. this year it'll be the day after Christmas, but uh, the kids will come home. We do church, usually late night church on Christmas Eve mm. and just kind of relax and play games and do presents on Christmas Day. So oh, that's how awesome. about you? Do you have any fun traditions? Our uh, family gets together on Christmas Eve. I have family that live out in the Canton, New Boston area okay. out by the airport. Uh, so I'll be heading out there Christmas Eve for a big, big dinner and nice. there'll probably be 30 people or more all crammed. Out. I hope, yeah. <laughs> hope I'm not at the kiddie table this year. Um, so that's Christmas Eve. I usually stay the night out there, get up Christmas morning. We have a huge breakfast, uh, scrambled eggs, every meat imaginable, nice. including uh, Polish kielbasa. Uh, so we have a big, big breakfast that morning. Uh, open up the gifts and everything and then uh, I go to my cousin's house for Christmas Day dinner and they're Italian so it's a big Italian spread yeah meatballs sausage pasta mm -hmm. you name it so yeah, yeah. We, we used to have those when I was growing up but since everyone has gotten older and you know some families have moved to Florida you know some parts of the family have moved to Florida and so yeah but I do remember those days the big feasts <laughs> yeah, yeah, next time you see me, I'll probably be about 15 pounds <laughs> heavier. So, oh, yeah. Now, the other thing that it. really kind of kicks the holiday season in the high gear uh, here in Lake Orion is, of course, the parade. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had the parade on Saturday. The night before was the Holly Jolly Folly, yes. which is the big fundraiser for the parade. And all of Lake Orion comes out for yes. that. I've never seen more people at the Holly Jolly Folly. They estimate it was over 400 wow. people at Galling Buick GMC. And so that's a big party the night before the parade. And then, of course, uh, the next day, uh, people, they started filling up downtown Lake Orion early. I, I got to downtown Lake Orion to set up video equipment around 4 o'clock, two hours before the start time. I couldn't find parking. Really? It was crazy. Oh. So people came out early and lined the streets of the downtown. And then at around 6 o'clock, the parade left Blant Sims Elementary School and yep. made its way uh, through downtown Lake Orion. Yeah, so. it was in the weather. I mean, oh, it was just perfect. how perfect was that? Be, you know, between Friday night and Sunday, though, you know, we really lucked out with the weather. So yeah, 
It was, I think, the warmest I ever remember it being for oh, we've the had Christmas some, parade. We've had some miserable weather uh, for the yeah. parade. I yeah. remember wearing a, a, a parka or a yeah. poncho, or I maybe both. I uh, remember when my kids were younger, like there, we had like two feet of snow and like we packed, we packed little seats for them to, <laughs> out of snow to sit in and watch the parade go by. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, I think that uh, kind of helped make the crowd uh, turn out bigger than ever and yeah. the parade seemed to be better than ever. So of course, yeah. I was down there with our uh, cameras and uh, here's a look at the Holly Jolly Folly and the parade on Saturday. On the evening of Friday, December 1st, an estimated 400 community members gathered at Golling View at GMC in Orion Township for the 17th annual Holly Jolly Folly. Local businesses and community groups donated items for a silent auction in the dealership showroom, and attendees enjoyed an evening of music and food courtesy of Italia Gardens. It was great. I mean, the, the crew here, 9 o'clock this morning, we were already gunned up, ready to go. Everybody was excited. All the employees helped out, did everything we could do. We got a great crowd here again tonight, and we got a great band. And we got the Lake Orion Choir, and we got a great band tonight. Food's great from Italian Garden, so I look forward to this. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of work, but we look forward to doing this, and um, it's like a wedding. Every year we get, just keep doing it better and better, and I give all the credit to B Bill Cocainus and his wonderful group of people who put this thing on, but we got a great band tonight, uh, Power Play Detroit, which was voted the number one up-and-coming band in Detroit, pop band, and they're just, they're phenomenal, so that's we're really excited about having them. Obviously, we've got our silent auction and we've got a, the full-blown meal and everything else that's going on here and we're just looking forward to a really great night. The annual fundraiser helps make the Orion Lighted Parade one of the biggest and best parades in the state, if not the country. For the community, you know, we just, we uh, want to try to give back and, and, you know, this time of year it's all about the kids and so if we can help put on the biggest and best lighted parade in the state of Michigan, we think that's a big deal. Um, we have some influence over the children in the community. Thank you very much. This community does and comes through for every charity around here. And this is a great group. There's a lot of people I've never seen here before. So I, it's, it's a great thing and it's a great way to start the holiday season. 24 hours later, thousands of residents from in and around Lake Orion lined the streets of the downtown area for the Orion Lighted Parade. Approximately 70 parade entries gathered at Blanche Sims Elementary School and made their way into the heart of the village at 6 p.m. The parade passed the main stage at Front Street and Broadway, where John Cooper and Rock and Ronnie provided the commentary. The Grand Marshals of this year's parade were Lloyd and Kathy Coe, who own Ed's Broadway gift and costume located on the corner of Flint and Broadway. The Coes provide the costumes for many of the colorful characters that greet the families lined up along the route. The Citizen of the Year was Jerry Norsh, who served the community as police chief for almost 40 years before retiring and is currently the village council president. The parade featured colorful floats, marching bands, community groups, and military vehicles and ran just over an hour, concluding, as always, with Santa and Mrs. Claus bringing up the rear. So wonderful. So happy to have you here. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Santa and Mrs. Claus. Thank you for all you do for all the kids. Merry Christmas. And we'll, we'll see you at the Santa Tin afterward. After the parade was over, families were encouraged to head over to a tent set up at Broadway and Chatbolt to meet up with Santa, Mrs. Claus, and Rudolph for a photo opportunity and to share their Christmas wish list. It brings everybody together. It brings 7,000 people who come down to view it, and then it brings another 100 or not 100,000 people that are probably participating or working it or doing whatever. That's a lot of people in one time for one night for three hours. And I think that I've had a lot of people tell me, even when I'm walking up and down the street, that. This parade, this event, starts their holiday season, and it makes them want to get into the holidays. <clears throat> and so the parade was really awesome. Yes. Uh, it ran a little over an hour, and it was great. Uh, I did see a lot of comments on Facebook the next day about the truck horn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw the comments. I, I think where I was, it, I mean, yeah, it sounded like a truck horn, but it wasn't anything 
terrible, but I think it, it was, was it the was loudest the, horn was I've it? ever heard. Well, it must have been levels. louder near where you were at, yeah. down farther down. But by the time it came up into the residential area, yeah. uh, I don't think that they were blowing it quite as much. I <laughs> so, once shot video of a the jet uh, landing at Selfridge Air <laughs> National Guard Base, and it rivaled that. So, <laughs> so uh, but they did say they're gonna. I, I did see the comments from the parade group, and they said that that will not happen. <laughs> again. So I'll take yeah, care of it. so that's right. Uh, uh, we're now joined by Sergeant Ray Hammond of the Lake Orion uh, Police Department. Uh, did you have fun at the parade this year? We had a blast at the parade this year. <laughs> it was uh, awesome. a really good turn. I think it seemed like it was uh, record attendance. This yeah, year. It, yeah, it really uh, it not, felt not like only that. for the floats, but for uh, for everybody watching the parade as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was told that the parade entries were around 70 this year, which wow. is probably wow. more than ever before. And uh, you know, when I came out to this community, I came out late '93. And 94 was the last daytime parade that okay. they had. Uh, the next year in 1995 is when they went with the nighttime parade and that like brought everybody out and they've been okay. doing it ever since. So we're getting really close to 30 years of the wow. nighttime lighted wow. parade. So. And I think, yeah. isn't it the, the second largest in the country? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. It, I've it, heard it, the largest yeah. in Michigan, the largest yeah. lighted parade in Michigan. Yeah. 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 So, so it's, it's, it's awesome. It's yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to come out at night and see <laughs> sure. lights? And I mean, it's just such a fun environment. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then Santa. Uh, does the meet and greet after the parade, and yep. that was really there awesome. was, so there's yeah, a long line. There was a long line. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. awesome. Uh, Ray, thanks for coming out. Uh, one pleasure. of the reasons we invited you out today is uh, there's an event coming up that uh, is a really special event. Uh, I cover it every year, and it's hard not to get emotional when I'm there with my camera shooting video, but uh, every year the Lake Orion Police Department invites a couple dozen uh, children to come out to Target uh, to do some holiday shopping for themselves. They call it uh, Shop of the Hero. Uh, what can you tell us about this amazing program? Well, this is our 15th year of wow. Shop of the Hero. It started back in 2008. Uh, the Lake Orion Police Association, which is uh, which is members of the of the department, um, got together and they decided they wanted to help out some of the uh, local youth. And it started with uh, just kind of a handful of kids. At one point, we had 150 children wow. in one year. Um, wow. So we've scaled it back. I think uh, the events in 2020 kind of mm -hmm. helped scale that back. All right. Uh, and we even had it that year as well. It was very rough, but we made it happen. Um, so it's been a great program and something I'm very proud to be a part of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, you know, I shoot video every year and I, I witness some pretty awesome moments. And one year, uh, you know, they tell these kids, they get a gift card, right? Like a hundred dollar <laughs> gift card. And they say, you can go shopping for yourself. And I remember I was shooting video and a police officer was leading a kid down the toy aisles. And the, the kid and the little boy insisted on going into like the doll aisle, the Barbie aisle. And the police officer kept saying, uh, this is the Barbie aisle. And the boy goes, I know. And he said, okay. And he's shopping. He's looking at everything. And he goes, are you sure you're in the right aisle? And he goes, I'm shopping for my sister. Yes. And yes. that just got me emotional because these kids are told, this money is for you. You shop for yourself. Yeah. But you see kids shopping for their siblings, their parents. Uh, they're, they're being raised Right, you know. So, what have you witnessed of being part of this program? Uh, well, it, again, it, it is it is great to see that the children um, not only shop for themselves, but they're thinking outside the box, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and they're shopping for parents or siblings, grandparents, caretakers. Uh, but it's the amount of heroes that we actually have that join us that sometimes outweigh the amount of kids. Yeah. And it's it's that uh, the community. Uh, shows up um, in droves. The, the law enforcement, uh, fire departments, uh, federal agencies, military show up in droves because they too want to, you know, the, the children are our heroes. Let's not lie. Yeah. <laughs> the, the children are our heroes because they're 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 kids, they're yeah. innocent yeah. hearts. Yep. Um, so that's something that's amazing to me as well is just the amount of people that come together and they want to uh, e either uh, physically help or uh, financially help the program. Yeah. And, you know, another thing that is accomplished by this event is, you know, you want to form a positive 
bond with the kids. Yes. You know, a lot of kids, you know, they see the police car and they yeah. panic, they freak out. <laughs> it's the popo. <laughs> and uh, this event puts the police officers in a positive light. Talk about the benefit of that. Well, it is. It's always a positive notion to get involved with with uh, young children in the community and and to let them know that we're not just there um, to to arrest or write tickets <laughs> or or uh, you know shake our fingers at them, <laughs> um, but we're there to to help them just in general and be their friends, um, participate in in what they do. Uh, we, we we enjoy going to the school and maybe having a basketball game or uh, you know doing our, our our kids and cops nights and really getting involved and. In playing with the kids. Yeah, and yeah. building those relationships because that's what it's all about, right? Anybody can look at someone or look at a uniform and, you know, but when you start to build those relationships and the bonds form, that's when, you know, we're all human, right? And when yeah. we become it's so human important. to each other. So important, yes. Yeah, yeah you, I love seeing videos of like, you see kids playing basketball outside and a police car rolls up and they go, oh, what do we do now? <laughs> and the officers get out and play basketball with yeah. them. Like yeah. you, you wanna have that positive And they don't impact. let the kids win. They're competitive. Bring it, right? Bring it. Now, of course, the Shop of the Hero program is, is made possible thanks to a generous community. Yes. Uh, I know the former Chief Jerry Narsh told me that there was one individual, and I don't know his name off the top of my head, but he kind of was instrumental in making a big donation every year. But talk about how this program relies on donations. I wish I knew his name as well because, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> it, the funding has dropped a little bit uh, in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the community does help, and we, we reach out to them um, by, via social media and just word of mouth to let them know uh, the need for, for funding uh, for the program. Um, this year, we're working with the um, Orient Parade Group um, they're helping us with our online funding. Um, that's something that is really big now. People just want to be able to go online and donate. And of course, we've continued to accept cash and check donations as well. Um, but the funding has is, is gotten a little lighter in the years and our groups have gotten a little smaller. Okay, so we have we have it up here. How if you uh, want to, uh, if you want to donate, you can right drop off cash or check at the the uh, the police station at yeah. the village yeah. hall or online as well. So yeah. they're collecting donations, right? So anything we can do. I right. need to partner you up with uh, the VFW. When I was at the Holly Jolly Folly on Friday, uh, James Hubbard, who's the the the. I think the president of the VFW, uh, he approached me and said, uh, how can we get involved with this program? We want to help, uh, you know, kids get Christmas. So yeah. I need to put you in touch, touch with James Hubbard because be they, they want to cut a check to help the program too. Mm -hmm. And doesn't the uh, the car show that we do back in July normally, doesn't that kind of help out a little bit? Yes. Yeah, so uh, not only has the um, Orient Parade Group helped with our funding, um, but Galling GMC, um, they helped to sponsor our, uh, our, our Lake Orient Police Association car show every August. Uh, and those, the proceeds from that car show go into our uh, into our Shop of the Hero Fund. Yeah, and, and the Pancake Breakfast. And the Pancake I, I know breath, my family, oh, right. we, we attend that every year. That Ho is hosted by Johnny yes. Black's yep. right, Lake House. Yep. Um, and they, they do a wonderful job assisting. You know, we had yeah. two car shows this year. One was rain out. Yeah, right. The, the car show was, but we still had the but pancakes. But we still had That's the pancakes, right. yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes. In both times, we had a, it just a great time. Yeah. 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 Now, the day of Shop of the Hero, talk about that. So a kid gets partnered up with a police officer. Or a, a, a with, with their hero. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have, again, the police and fire and, and uh, uh, not just Lake Orion police, but we also have Oakland County Sheriff's mm -hmm. uh, deputies helping us out. Um, FBI, DEA, uh, federal personnel, military personnel mm -hmm. as well. So the kids really can kind of pick and choose okay. who their hero is. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be a certain you know, officer. Or it can be a certain officer if they mm -hmm. wish. Uh, and then they're given uh, a, a card, a gift card The basically? officer or the, the hero is given a, a gift card uh, and their calculator on their phone and they go out into the toy aisles or uh, the Barbie aisles, wherever they choose yeah. to uh, to do a shopping. And the officer or the hero, I'm sorry, there, is calculating to make sure we just stay under that, you know, at or around that amount. Yeah. Um, and Target's kind enough to allow us to do this in their in their stores, um, and usually give us a little discount on top <laughs> as yeah. we're at the register checking out. So, 
Now, something that I've witnessed, I've never seen a hero make a child put something back because they went <laughs> over the limit. No. I've seen officers pull out their wallet Guilty. if things Guilty go a little yeah. over the limit, and that's yeah. pretty special, too. So. Yeah, we're, we're not going to turn anybody away for, <laughs> for a few bucks. Um, it, it's just, they're, they're not only there to, to see that the kids are having a good time, but they're there to see that the, the holidays are are joyful for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Now another aspect of this that's tied in a little bit is uh, the police department does uh, kids and cops program yes, yes. at Blant Sims Elementary School. Mm -hmm. Blant Sims is the only elementary school that uh, is in downtown Lake Orion and uh, the old building is gone so mm -hmm. this is going to be the first time that you're going into the new building. Talk about what kids experience during kids and cops. We're still working out the particulars with the new building, but during our uh, our kids and cops, um, we pretty much give kids the run of the school. We're there just there to make sure that um, you know everybody's having a good time. We set up ping pong tables and play uh, floor hockey in the cafeteria, basketball in the gym, and um, hula hoop in the gym, and yeah. uh, arts and crafts in the uh, in the library in the media center. Um, so it's really a good time. It's, a, it's usually a Friday night where parents can drop the kids off for a couple hours, maybe get some free time to themselves, yeah. take a breather, <laughs> and uh, and then pick the kids up in a couple hours. That's, <laughs> That's when we need our breather yeah. by, that, by that point. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't think the, the thugs and the hoodlums cause you as much problem as the kids at uh, Blacks. <laughs> no, no. But it is. It's a really good time, Joe. And we, we just uh, we enjoy getting in there and playing with the kids. It's something to take, yeah. a, take away from the, the winter blah. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Uh, on a Friday night to, to bring up spirits. Now the money that's raised, like at the car show and through donations, uh, from what I've been told, the police department has purchased things like ping pong tables yes. and leave them permanently at the school. A lot of those, uh, a lot of yeah, a lot of those things um, just get left at the school. They'll give us a, a corner somewhere to stuff these things mm -hmm. until our next event. Um, I th I think we forgot a few things at the old plan Sims, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I think we need to go back and reevaluate <laughs> what we need to buy this year. Um, you know, and thing, obviously things get worn out when you have kids sure. just playing with them all the time. Yeah. So uh, it's time to update our supplies. And I have this image in my head of the former Chief Harold Rossman, who retired recently. I remember seeing him come through the front door of the stack of pizzas that was almost as <laughs> tall as him. Yes, so yes. that's part of it too, is the pizza party. Yes, yep. So um, we, we partnered with uh, Sick Pizza last year in Oxford, and they, uh, they helped provide the pizzas, and uh -huh. the kids love it. So. I thought you were going to refer to um, Chief Rossman's Elmo costume last oh. year. <laughs> oh, that's right. We yeah. don't want to give away any secrets. <laughs> yeah, so it's awesome that you guys do that. And uh, so it's a week from Wednesday at mm -hmm. Target. Yep. Um, if more donations come in, that means more shopping for kids is what I'm told. So there's still time to donate, right? There's still time to donate and there's still time to register. Mm -hmm. um, so if uh, we, we get our... We get our children from the uh, suggestions of the faculty at the schools. Yeah. Um, so if you know anybody knows of a family that really just could use an extra helping hand this winter, um, welcome to reach out to us at the police department. That's awesome. Yeah. You guys are doing great things in the community and uh, yes. just keep up the great work. I know. I live in the village and I'm very thankful that I that I do for the Lake Warren <laughs> Police Department. So yeah. that's right. That's one right. One of the best assets of the village. So I agree. Thank you. Yeah. I agree. And this Wednesday, there's a Shop of the Hero event going on at Meyer in Oxford, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, the Oxford Police Department teams up with uh, uh, the Sheriff's Department yep. and uh, other, like, a fire department and stuff like that. So, so at Meyer in Oxford, there's a Shop of the Hero event going on this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. The following Wednesday is the Lake Orion event at Target on Brown Road, correct? In yes. Auburn Hills. So, uh, like I said, there's still time to register or donate. So, all right, thanks for joining us. Always good, good seeing you. Thank you. Right. We'll see you Thank out and about in the much. community. Very good. Yep. And we're gonna uh, take you to uh, Bob Lowe, who's a very talented performer, musician. Uh, he comes in the studio and does a program. And uh, not too long ago, he did a Christmas program. Uh, so here's an excerpt from uh, his recent holiday program. Dashing through the snow in a 
one horse open sleigh Over the fields we go Laughing all the way Bells on bobtails ring Making spirits bright Oh, what fun it is to ride and sing the sleighing song tonight Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh Now a day or two ago Thought I'd take a ride Soon Miss Fanny Bright Was seated by my side Now the horse was lean and lank Misfortune seemed his lot Cause we got into a drifted bank And soon we got upside Whoa, jingle bells, jingle bells Jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride In a one-horse open sleigh Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells. Moving along, here's one that's a slower song that Eddie Arnold recorded on one of his Christmas albums, and he said, Christmas can't be very far away. A neighbor tipped his hat to me this morning. The landlord even smiled and said good day. I want you to know stranger said hello Christmas can't be very far away Old Tightwad down the street is buying candy So pass out to the neighbor kids at play This town is on the go The weatherman says hello Christmas can't be very far away. Small fry on our block have all been saving. Now they're hiding things and looking sly. Mom will get that doodad she's been craving. And Dad, he'll get his usual Christmas time. Both young and old are planning sweet surprises. They'll soon be tied with ribbons, bright and gay. Goodwill is in the air. you find it everywhere. Christmas can't be very far away. Get that dude that she's been craving. And dad, he get his usual Christmas time. Both young and old are planning sweet surprises. They'll soon be tied with ribbons, bright and gay. Goodwill is on the air. You feel it every Christmas can't be very far away. So that is the very talented Bob Lowe. We love having him here in the studio. Yeah. Uh, 
It's uh, not a rough day at work when I'm in the control room tapping my feet <laughs> to uh, Bob singing songs here in the studio. He's just great. He, he is. performs at local like senior centers and things like that. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's, he's awesome. Very so. nice. Yeah. Yes. So enjoyed that. Um, next up, we have a little snippet uh, from a show that we did here a few years ago at ON TV, and it's kind of a neat story that goes along with it. Um, Kayla and Bella are two cousins who approached us about doing a show here at ON TV, and I mm -hmm. said, "Yeah, let's do it." And and I kind of helped them write some skits and stuff like that. And uh, after about six months of doing episodes, uh, Bella. Uh, said, uh, I want to do this for a living. This is what I want to do. So her and her mom uh, moved out to California, to Hollywood, rented a place, and the very first audition that Bella went on, it was just what they call a blind audition, just walk in, yeah. uh, she got the gig. Wow. And she's been out there uh, almost eight years now. Wow. And she is a working actress. Okay. And the, the most high profile project that she's been on is uh it's called Wolfpack and it's on Paramount I believe Paramount okay. Plus and it was very very popular with with the teens <laughs> and as a matter of fact uh in one of our classes that we do here at ON TV I played a clip from Wolfpack to tell people the story and a teenage girl that was in the class got kind of emotional and she's like I love that program oh. And so Bella, if you watch uh, Wolfpack, Bella got her start right here at Owen TV and went out to Hollywood and became an actress How fun. out there. So I love that's that. a neat yeah. uh, story. So her and her cousin uh, Kayla uh, used to do the La La Girls uh, here at Owen TV. And here's uh, a clip from their holiday show where they do a, a recipe and a craft. Welcome back to the La La Girls. This is our snack and craft portion of the show. So let's start with the craft. Today we are going to be making a DIY mason jar snow globe. What you need is a mason jar filled almost all the way with water. You're going to need some glitter, white, or you can use anything else. And you're going to need a cute figurine that you can get from Michaels. So to start, we're going to open the mason jar. So where do you get a mason jar? You can get it at Michael's for around $3. And how do you know what size to get? Um, you can get any size, but make sure the figurine fits inside the mason jar. So we're going to take a napkin or your hand. You can use whatever. OK, so we're going to take the now dry cap and the figurine and just take off the label if you want. And now we are going to take the hot glue gun. It's really, really hot, so be careful. And we are just going to put some glue around. And stick it right on. Cool. And you can center it. That's cool. Now what? Then, once it's dry, all you have to do is take the glitter, open it. You're just going to pour some in. You want it? Sure. Just pour some in. Okay. And now we're going to take the figurine and put it in. Oh, that's cool. And then we are going to put the cap on. Make sure you screw it on really tight. And then turn it over. Oh, oh that's be cute so cool. Bubble. Can I see it? That's really cool. This craft was only about mm, six to seven dollars. And it's actually a really easy, fun thing to make. That's cool. Let's go on to your snack. I am making strawberry Santa's. Great. So you're going to want to get some strawberries at the grocery store, obviously. And um, you're going to want some strawberries, a cutting board, some sprinkles, a knife, and some cream cheese frosting, which is cream cheese and um, powdered sugar mixed together. So 
first, you're gonna wanna take a strawberry and your knife, and you're gonna cut about halfway between the strawberry. So, do that. And you're gonna put that half to the side. So what is this gonna be? This is gonna be the body of Santa. And then this, the cream cheese frosting, is going to be the face of Santa. So. Do you want me to hold down the strawberry? Uh, sure. So you're gonna wanna put a good amount, and then you can shape the frosting with the knife. So that's the face. Are you gonna make a hat? Yes. The hat is actually this part. Oh. If you need it smaller, could you do it smaller? Yes, you could. If you wanted a smaller hat, you could cut it up here more. And if you wanted a larger hat, you could cut further down. So for the eyes, you can use chocolate sprinkles. So Yum. I'm just gonna put a little there. You wanna take one? Yeah. And then you can just stick them. Come right in there. Where should I put this one? Right next to it. <laughs> and you can even stick in one for a button. Oh! And for the top of the hat, you put a little dab of frosting. Oh, it's so cute. Thanks. It's I good to eat it. too. <laughs> Yum. All right. So, thank you for watching this part of the Lala Girls. Stay tuned. So that's Kayla and Bella yeah. uh, doing a little craft and a little uh, cooking thing. I'm gonna have to go try that snowball <laughs> craft. That was very creative. Do you have any like Christmas traditions? Like when I when I was younger, uh, my mom used to get these candy molds, and there would be like molds of like snowmen and nutcrackers and things like that. And she would buy chocolate, and uh -huh. usually like white chocolate, and we put food coloring in there to make different colors. And then I would take those molds and I would take, like put a little red for like Rudolph's nose and stuff like that. And yeah. we would do these Christmas chocolates and people would come over and go, oh, where did you buy these? And my mom was like, my son made these. <laughs> uh, and that was a fun tradition when yeah. I was younger. That I was think a lot we need to see some of these, Joe. I know, we might have to do <laughs> like a little segment, yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything like that, that uh, annual tradition, making cookies we, or anything? Yeah, like that? I mean, we do make cookies. Yeah. and um, But I'm actually gonna do something a little different this year. Um, I have a taco seasoning recipe so Ooh. anybody who uh, might be getting one just don't watch this episode no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah so I'm gonna just make a big batch of that and I have the the cute like jars with the oh, yeah. um, bamboo lids you know screw on lids so I, I'm gonna do that this year break the the cookie tradition but um, one of the things I do with my kids every year or for them I should say is they get a picture ornament like that's one mm -hmm. of their gifts it's tradition for, it's usually their school picture or like with my girls in college, I find a picture now and put it in. So our tree is filled with all of their pictures from all the years growing up. Oh, wow. Um, and then we also get them whenever we go on vacation somewhere. So our tree is like a memory tree. And oh, that's awesome. So it's, it's a lot of fun putting up the ornaments and then and seeing them all throughout the season. So I'm a big uh, pop culture guy. So when I set up my yeah. tree, um, most of the ornaments on my tree are, are pop culture related, Disney okay. and movies and TV shows and things like that. And yeah. believe it or not, Hallmark stores, they launched their first wave of ornaments back in July. Wow. That's when they have their first big reveal. Yeah. And then in October, they do a second batch. And uh, I, if there's a couple that catch my eye, I'll yeah. pick them up. And some of them become very, very valuable. I, I remember... Bet. Probably around 2015, Hallmark released an uh, ornament of Cousin Eddie's RV from oh, Christmas Vacation. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> and I remember I bought one, 
you know, I hung it on my tree for a few yeah. years, and then I found out that it was worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So I ended up selling it for like $300. Wow. I paid maybe 20 for it. Uh, today, it, it could sell for as much as 500 It's oh uh, It's pretty cool to see those those ornaments go up in value. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, how fun. Yeah, so that's, that's one the best enjoy. Christmas movie, in my opinion. But Christmas Vacation. Christmas Vacation. So I got to yeah. go with Christmas Story. <laughs> okay, I love yeah. Christmas Story. Yeah. Story. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I kind of saved myself a little bit of work decorating for Christmas because I have a year-round Christmas display of the leg lamp and oh. <laughs> a bunch of things from A Christmas Story on the little thing by my window. I actually have a replica of, the, actually it's an original, but it's similar to the one used in the movie, the Little Orphan Annie decoder pin. Oh, I have one wow. uh, from 1940, I think it is. And, uh, and oh, I have the BB gun, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you go to Walmart, you can find the Red Ryder BB gun. They call it the Christmas Wish Edition, which is identical to the one in the movie. Okay. So those things I leave, uh, I leave out year round. Uh, another so is, is, is your is your place like you know I'm picturing you know when you walk through um, and there's like the glass you go through like a museum or something and like <laughs> there's no glass you can you pick can, up you can and actually touch, touch and, it all. yeah, <laughs> okay. um, yeah. Um, even though I do have like shadow boxes hanging on the wall and yeah. Another year-round Christmas display I have is from that beloved Christmas movie, Die Hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a sweatshirt that says, now I have a machine gun, ho, 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 and a little Christmas hat and some walkie-talkies. Oh. Um, so there's a few Christmas things I have out that are up year-round. So, yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah. Well, so, yeah, Die Hard, right? It, Christmas, not Christmas. So. Well, that, <laughs> that argument yeah. comes up this time of the year every yeah. year. Personally, I don't think it's a Christmas movie. Movie. It, it just happens to be set at Christmas, right, but right. every year I start seeing people on Facebook go, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I'm like, no, it's not. But I, I do love if it. If it makes you think of the season, right? It right. puts you in the mood for the season. Then. <laughs> That's oh, right. Yeah. And then there's some old classics I like to watch this time of the year. Of course, you know, It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, the Shop Around the Corner. Have you ever seen that no, with Jimmy Stewart? I haven't. Uh, that okay. was remade with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan as You Got Mail. Oh, And okay. basically it's about uh, two people who are pen pals sending each other these beautiful poems and letters. They don't know each other in person, and when they end up working together, they hate each other's guts. <laughs> so they're corresponding to each other and not realizing that they're working with the person they're corresponding with. And that's set at Christmas time, and that's a really great movie to watch this time of the year. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, you know, Miracle on 34th Street and all the dozen or so Scrooge movies that are out there, you know. So, Elf, yeah. Elf. I Elf, mean, of course, movie. yeah. I can't believe that movie is like 20 years old. Now, <laughs> I know. I know. It doesn't seem like it was that no, long ago. No, no. That's wild. <laughs> so yeah, that's one thing I do to get in the holiday spirit is uh, watch a couple of Christmas movies. Yeah. 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 Uh, next up, uh, one of our beloved ONTV volunteers, Evelyn Doyle. Uh, she comes in and does a show every once in a while here in the studio. She's a, a former uh, producer of the year, volunteer of the year. Uh, so here's a little snippet of her doing uh, a story time uh, night before Christmas. Hi, this is Evelyn with Holiday Stories. And I have Twas the Night Before Christmas. We kind of all know this story. <laughs> Here we go. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a giraffe. But, but, but. A mouse? Oh, okay. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were all nestled snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. 
When out on the lawn there rose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave luster of midday to objects below. When to my wondering eyes should appear, but a miniature car and eight tiny rain, uh, what? Huh? Not a car? Who well, everybody drives a car? A sleigh. Oh, okay. But a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. Is that better? Okay. With a little old driver, so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it had to be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. Oh, Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and George. Yes, George, George. No? Who? Oh. On Comet, on Cupid, on Dander, and Blitzen. You're right. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wind of the hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the house stop, the coursers they flew with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in the twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from head to his feet and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his back. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His drool little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was white as snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And laying his fingers out beside his nose and giving a nod, out the front door he went. What? No? Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. And giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh. To his team he gave a whistle. And away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drew, drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all. And to all a good night. Merry Christmas. God bless you all.
Thanks, Evelyn. She always does such a yeah, good job. It's it like very having nice. our, our grandmother here yeah. to <laughs> read us stories. Uh, we kind of want to wrap up with uh, a look at upcoming events here in the community. So here is, I believe, Becky with this week's Quick Hits. Do you still have some holiday shopping to do? The Orient Arts Center's Holiday Market is open. Stop by the Downtown Gallery now until December 23rd. The market is open on Thursdays through Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. The Made in the Mitten Pop-Up Market will be taking place at the Orient Center this Wednesday from 3 to 7 p.m. Spend your money locally and buy homemade unique items for gift giving. Admission and parking is free. There's still a few spots open for the Breakfast with the Grinch. The breakfast will be taking place on Saturday, December 9th at the Orient Center. Spots are going fast, so register today at OrientParks.com. On Saturday, the Went Nature Center will be hosting a do-it-yourself rustic Yule Log workshop. Create your own festive centerpieces as you learn the history of the Yule Log tradition. All supplies will be provided. Free registration with payment is required by calling 248-858-0916. Well, it looks like we'll be staying dry until the weekend. Wednesday's forecast is calling for partly cloudy skies with a high of 37 and low 31. Morning clouds on Thursday with a high of 46 and low 36. Mostly cloudy on Friday with a high of 52 and low 42. Showers on Saturday with a high of 52 and low 37. And rain and snow on Sunday with a high of 39 and low 27. Well, that's it for this week's ONTV TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. So again, right. lots of stuff uh, happening uh, in the next couple of weeks. Lots yeah. of stuff for people to do. So yeah, absolutely. And if, and and again, if you want to be a part of helping to donate for the shop with the hero for the Lake Orion Police Department, um, you can do it online, or you can drop a cash or check off at the police department yep. um, on Church Street. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. So um, with these last couple of minutes, we are just chatting uh, off camera. We're yeah. facing each other in fantasy <laughs> yes, football yeah, this week. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> luckily, our game this weekend is meaningless because we're both, we're both. going to make the playoffs. Yeah. So yes. new season starts when the playoffs start. And yeah. my my team has a lot of momentum uh, heading into the playoffs, so I'm hoping for good things. Yeah. Our league has a couple of juggernauts that are going to be tough to get past. Yes. Uh, our coworker uh, Joey's wife has just been dominating she this really entire has. season. Yes. So yes. She's going to. She's a force. I hope that, I don't have to see her week one. So. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever faces her in week one, I hope they yeah. knock her out. So she, I don't. She have was to my first her. loss. I was on a six-week winning streak, and yeah. then she just took me down. So. <laughs> it's hard to believe that yeah. we're, we're coming toward the end of our fantasy football season. That went by so quickly. It and really did. It feels like we were just here doing our draft. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and yeah, we do updates every week. If you haven't uh, watched, we do a podcast every week uh, to do updates on yeah. who's doing well and which players to pick up on waivers and that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, if you're so. a fan of football, then you definitely want to catch that podcast. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's on YouTube and it airs, of course, here on ONTV, on Comcast and AT&T. So... Uh, I think that pretty much uh, wraps up uh, this yeah. final episode for 2023. Uh, we'll be back in January. I don't know what the dates are just yet, but uh, we'll be back in January for 2024. Yeah. Uh, also be on the lookout. Uh, we're soon going to be taping our year in review. We're going to look back at all the major events that took place in Lake Orion over the past year. Uh, our news anchor, Stacy Calloway, will come in to do that. And that's always a lot of fun yeah. uh, when I sit down to edit that and go, oh, yeah, I remember that. So yeah. uh, look for our year in review. That should start airing uh, at the end of December into January. So. All right. Yeah. Sounds great. Well, if I don't see you, good luck in fantasy football and have a great holiday same with too. the family. Thank you. You did the same, Joe. Yeah, and so, same to you yep. folks watching. Uh, happy holidays, happy new year, and we'll see you in 2024. See you.